Hello, I'm Dr. Jane Tabor, audiologist for the Washington State Center for Childhood Deafness and Hearing Loss at the Washington School for the Deaf. So similar to a hearing aid check, when you do a cochlear implant check, you want to do um, a physical, physical inspection of the implant itself, the external components. You want to do a battery check, and you want to do a signal and listening check as well. So now we're going to discuss um, the different parts of a cochlear implant, both the internal and external components. We're going to start with the external. You have your ear hook, which helps secure the um, implant onto the student's ear. You have your sound processor, which is this part right here. Um, it's easier to see when the battery is disconnected, so this part. You have your battery compartment that, that stores your batteries. And this will look a little bit different um, depending on the model and style of cochlear implant that you have. Okay, You have your transmitting cable. And you always want to make sure um, that this is securely fastened, um, that it feels snug and tight. Because um, oftentimes, if the implant's not working, it usually has something to do with this transmitting cable. And here we have the external um, transmitting coil, which communicates with the internal coil that's implanted in inside the child's head. And this part is where the magnet is housed. Now, if a student comes to you and complains that um, the implant is hurting their head, you might want to take a look at the magnet. And you can adjust it by turning it with your finger to either loosen it or, or make it closer to the skin. Once you've determined that the external components um, um, appear that they're functioning or, and are intact, then you want to go ahead and do a battery check. So. To do this, you might have to unlock the battery compartment. On some pediatric implants, they have it locked so that the, the child or student cannot uh, tamper with the batteries. Sometimes you might have to um, unlock the battery compartment. So you would grab a screwdriver, turn it vertically, and then you'll be able to pull the battery cover off. And then you can either take the batteries out that are in there and use your battery checker as we discussed in our um, hearing aid check video. And once you determine that the batteries are good, you can go ahead and put them back in. And you wanna make sure that they're in the, the right way and there'll be instructions on how to do that. But usually, um, the flat side is facing up. Um, and sometimes you might have one that has a stack of batteries, a stack of three batteries, so you just wanna make sure you insert those correctly as well. And you want to attach the battery pack back and go ahead and, and turn it horizontally to lock it back in place and give it a little tug to make sure it's still um, locked in place. Okay. So after you've determined that the power source is working appropriately, you want to go ahead and put the implant on the child and do a signal check. You can do this um, by using monitor earphones. Um, and you can get these, you can order these online from um, whatever cochlear implant company that you're using, either Cochlear, America, um, Advanced Bionics, or Medall. Um, each company makes their own version that's compatible for the type and model of cochlear implant that your student or child might have. You can also um, ask your audiologist to order this for you, or you can ask um, the parent who might have an extra set in their kit at home if you can use a set at school to monitor um, the, the student's implant. Um, basically, to connect, you have to remove the battery cover so that you can flip up this little flap right here. Okay, And you'll see a, a place um, to add this connector. You just go ahead and connect that. Make sure it's snug. Okay. Then you would put the earphones in your ears. And this will allow you to um, check the microphone signal. You can go ahead and um, blow on the microphone. You can do your Link 6 sound check, ah, e, u, say a couple words. Just make sure that the microphone quality um, sounds good. Um, this will give you an idea if the amplifier um, and microphone are working appropriately. Unfortunately, you won't be able to check um, the quality of the signal that the child is receiving, and you won't be able to hear what the child is hearing. There's no, unfortunately no way to do that. Once you've determined that all those components are working, You want to go ahead and um, 
power on the implant. And to do this, every implant is different. What I would recommend is that you go online and you look up the particular model that your student has. Um, there's always a troubleshooting guide online for each model. Um, so you can either go to um, the manufacturer's website um, and look for it that way or you can do a Google search. Um, this model that we're using here is the Cochlear Nucleus 5, which is the newest implant um, made by Cochlear Americas. So you might see these often in the school system. On this particular model, to power on, there's two buttons. The lower button is what's actually going to power the implant on. You want to hold that down and you'll see a flashing green light and that's when you know it's powered on. Okay. Then you want to go ahead and connect, um, set the external processor onto um, the child's ear um, and find the magnet on the back of their head. Then you'll want to use your signal wand if you have one. If you don't have one, um, you can order one from your cochlear implant company, um, whatever manufacturer or model you're using. Uh, or you can also ask the parent. Sometimes they have an extra one um, inside their kit that they uh, might lend to you for use at school. So you want to take this, you run it over the transmitting coil. If everything's working appropriately, you'll see a red light. That lets you know that the external comp components are um, transmitting the sound to the internal components appropriately. So now we're going to do a listening check um, to make sure that the whole system is working appropriately. Um, to do the listening check, well, we're going to use the Link 6 sounds. Um, and those sounds again are A, ah, U, E, SH, S, M. Mm. And we use those sounds because they cover um, the wide range of speech frequencies from low to high pitch um, and ensure that um, the student has access um, to all sounds that are important for understanding speech. So the purpose of the Link 6 sound check is to determine if the student is able to detect sound, able to discriminate sound, and able to identify sound. Um, it's important that when you perform the listening check that it's done in a quiet auditory environment, um, that you use your normal speaking voice, Sometimes with a cochlear implant, um, we also use a whisper to, to see if they're able to, um, to, to identify the sounds. Um, and it's important that you randomize the order in which you present the sounds as well. Okay. And if a student is unable to repeat the sounds back to you, um, go ahead and try to prolong the sound for um, a little bit longer um, or use some intonation in your voice. And if they're still not able to, then go ahead and use something like this um, where they can point to the picture to let you know um, that they heard the sound or were able to discriminate or identify it. Shh. E. So as a classroom teacher, if you have any questions regarding a student that might have an implant in your classroom, you want to think about who's your resources in the area, who's on your team that you can contact. Um, most importantly would probably be the parent um, because you're going to have the most interaction with them. Um, and they are very knowledgeable usually um, about how the cochlear implant works. I'm sure if you talk to them they would be happy to come in, show you, teach you how to use it. Um, you can also contact your educational audiologist and they would be happy to come in and um, demo the product for you as well. Um, if you don't have an edu educational audiologist available to you, um, you can contact someone in your area that would be familiar with what resources um, you have. You can also go to the manufacturer websites such as Cochlear, Americas, Advanced Bionics, or Medel, um, and there's tons of resources on there, how-to videos, um, they have the Link 6 sound check cards on there, um, just tons of resources, so you might want to check that out. And we're going to list the websites for those at the end of this video. When it comes to batteries for the cochlear implant or hearing aid, uh, it's important to know that parents are responsible for supplying those batteries for their children. However, in some cases, um, parents aren't able to do so 
Um, and it's important that the school um, always has batteries on hand um, to supply those children um, with a power source for their implant or hearing aid. In fact, according to the Washington Administrative Code, or WAC, um, school districts are required to maintain proper function of equipment at all times for every student that has um, that utilizes a hearing aid or cochlear implant. It's important that if the battery dies sometime during the day, that you have one on hand to provide for them. This ensures that they will always have full access to their education.